it's funny to me when you see uh, coaches come in and speak to uh, businesses. And the things the coaches do very, very well is they build systems of reinforcing activities. And it always starts with people in recruiting, right? Same thing here. So what, what I want to do is share with you some of the things that I learned uh, as an athlete and have been able to take those and apply them in business. And it's really not that difficult. Winning is winning, guys. It's as simple as that. And, and winning takes a system of reinforcing activities, and it takes cultural readiness, and it takes a key element. But one thing you learn in athletics is to operate in a steady state of uneasiness. Put differently, call it constructive discontent. You ever had a great year in your business? and the second year wasn't so great, what happened? What happened? We're going to talk about things like that today. When Charles Darwin presented his theory of evolution in 1859, he described a world in which only the fittest survived. A world in which species must constantly adapt to their changing environment or face extinction. A world in which organisms must continue to grow in a profitable direction and develop new skills and traits or perish, a world in which the surrounding conditions for life can suddenly and drastically improve or take a turn for the worse. Darwin even wrote, we're all bound by a complex web of relations. Now, he wrote that in 1859. I think that's more relevant today than ever. In 1955, Fortune came out with their first 500 list, the largest companies in the United States. How many? do you think are on that list today? 87% of those companies are gone. So the old age old question, does size matter? Not here it doesn't. So we take the second piece here. A world in which species must constantly adapt to their changing environment. Blockbuster video, Darlings of Wall Street in 2000. Filed chapter 11 in 2010. What happened? What happened? Did they operate in a steady state of uneasiness? Cultural readiness starts with the individual, and it starts with attitude. Attitude is the gate to your mind. If you look at that digital Darwin thing, some people in this room may say, doesn't apply to me. That's a choice from an attitude perspective. Attitude is the start of everything. It opens the door and lets things in. And there's very little difference in people, but the little difference makes a big difference. The little difference is attitude, and the big difference is whether it's positive or whether it's negative. It all depends on how you look at things. The second, and perhaps the most difficult, is personal accountability. Think about this. People fail in direct proportion to their willingness to accept socially accepted excuses for failure. So, I'd be successful if it wasn't for the economy. I'd be successful if someone would train me. I'd be successful if I worked for a different company. What they're actually saying is, hey, don't judge me by the same criteria you judge others. Because if you do, I'm going to fail. But as long as you go along with the idea that the economy is bad, the economy then fails and my hands are clean. If you had what I call a successful failure, do you know what that is? A successful failure? A successful failure is where you attempted something, you failed, and you made the necessary adjustments. The third cornerstone is perseverance. Tom Peters wrote a book, In Search of Excellence, and I had the pleasure of seeing him speak. And I wrote this thing down as fast as I could because he said, being good is a stupid idea. The only thing that counts is are you getting better at a more rapid rate than your principal competitors? He said it's real simple. If you're not doing more, better, faster, than they're doing more, better, faster, then you're getting less, better, or more, worse. I love that. What business are you in? You are in the customer business. The fourth cornerstone is habit. And um, put simply, champions are not made in the ring. They're merely recognized there. The difference between the successful company and the unsuccessful company is this. The successful company is in the habit of doing things the unsuccessful company doesn't do. Three little words. You know what they are? In the habit. So then we break it down. What type of employees work in our company? There are those who serve the customers and those who serve those who serve the customers. That's it. Let's not overcomplicate this thing. 
that the value of the company is predicated on customer equity. And he would say, no, Mike, it's a multiple of EBITDA. And I said, well, customer equity is the predicted future earnings or the lifetime value of your customers. If you don't retain your customers, if you show no history of retaining your customers, your value is going to go down. That goes for the recruiting process. That goes for the sales process. Minimize variation in any process, quality goes up. Simple. Client retention expansion is the new acquisition. Why? Because it takes six to seven times more effort to acquire a customer than to sell them to an existing one. As a CEO, I knew if my clients were at risk, quantitatively and qualitatively. I could tell you who is at risk, how much they were at risk, what we were doing to fix the risk. You have to make a commitment to cross-selling. Cross-selling is a way of life. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to culturally drive the power of team, recognize and reward accordingly. What kills you in the sales process in any relationship isn't what you know, it's what you don't know. So in sales, we try to build structured, repeatable methodologies to understand what we don't know.